and did stop and frisk really ever go away? PIX 11 Jay Dow is joining us live in the South Bronx tonight with more on that story. Hi there, Jay. Hi, Tamsin. Rising crime, stop and frisk, and bickering between community activists and Mayor Bill de Blasio. We've heard all of this before. We've covered this story so often before. Tonight, we wanted to take it from a different angle and talk to the parents and the coaches who were trying to keep the next generation out of that equation. Nice, easy, easy. Out! Little League Baseball manager Ben Guillen is doing his best to keep his players from falling into a life that unfortunately is all too familiar here in the South Bronx. There's just one chain link fence separating your kids from the element that you're trying to keep them away from. Absolutely, yes. Ben has good reason to worry. It's very easy for these kids to come outside and have nothing to do and end up you know, just sitting on the bench with someone that they shouldn't be sitting on the bench, listening to things they shouldn't be listening to. Serious violent crime is up across the city this year, even as Mayor Bill de Blasio continues to defend the NYPD's abandonment of its unconstitutional practice of stop and frisk. People are not wasting time on, on unnecessary and unconstitutional stops and are not right. wasting time on low-level marijuana arrests either. According to the latest stats from the NYPD, murders are up 20%. Shootings are up 9%. The level of homicides committed um, is substantially higher. Is that indicative of more guns on the street? It's something that we're looking at. And for parents here, those first two stats overshadow the fact that overall crime is actually down 7%. South Bronx native Felix Guzman knows what's lurking on the other side of the baseball field's fence and the threat it poses to his 12-year-old son, Jaden. The stop and frisk, at first it was a bad thing because there was singing like minorities, young black men like myself. The last two years, the stop and frisk, you could see as the crime has going up that these kids are out here carrying guns. And the bad thing about it is that they're the young kids, young the younger generation, 15, 16 years old. These are familiar faces for coaches and parents. So are the sights, they say, of people hanging out all day, drinking and using drugs. Because the city locks up the field long before dusk, the team literally has to squeeze through a hole in the fence in order to escape to their oasis. Yeah, it feels better than the streets because I could get out um, a, a lot of trouble and stay on the field and do something good. Meantime, community activists did something bold Wednesday to express their frustration over Mayor de Blasio's handling of the situation. This is a coffin that's going to probably be used by one of our young people that's going to die due to gun or gang violence in our community. This man has to step up. For Little League manager Ben Guillen, what do angels do? We we he's simply trying to keep his young players from stepping out into potential trouble. And they have to walk through that. And usually I have to stop and make sure all my kids make it through that conveyor belt of people that are, and they just sit there all day long. Conveyor belt of what? Of, of people coming in and out that don't have anything else to do. You know, that this is what they do all day long. Obviously, you don't see anyone coming and leaving. Everyone's just pretty much sitting there. That's, that, be, that became their job. And your job is to what? Keep my kids off of those benches. You want to know what worries Ben? Losing track of his kids after they age out of his league, which is why he says he tries to keep up with them even after they put down the bat and glove. We're live in the South Bronx tonight. Jay Dow, PIX11 News. All right, Jay, thank you.